This is about body checking. And you know what? I forgot. I have forgotten. Like, I know I did body checking. But I have forgotten how long I body checked for and how obsessed I was with body checking. Now that I think back, because I, I remember my, I was traumatized by my symptoms. And of course, when you're traumatized by your symptoms, you check out those areas in your body, right? Now I'm gonna think about, this might be a little bit triggering for some people. If you're worried that if I mention a body part or a symptom that you're gonna start to, you know, get triggered, then uh, maybe you shouldn't watch, but it's gonna happen anyway when you hear people talk about it, talk about symptoms, your, your brain's gonna try it on. And I went through that, right? Uh, I went through that by listening to old people. Old people love to talk about their symptoms. And I never really realized that till I was going through this journey. But I think 95% of their conversation is about some sort of symptom. You know, something that doesn't work. The medication that they're taking. And the doctor said, yeah, but my doctor, who are you with? Right? They want to compare doctors. They want to talk about blood work. They want to talk about, uh, you know, their friend that died of this and what they're, you know, it's... That's why, you know... They don't mix well with people that have, you know, OCD looping thoughts and 70 symptoms. It's just a bomb waiting to go off. So for me, I had to avoid old people as much as possible. And I love old people because they have so much wisdom, right? And I loved having conversations with them and everything. But when it comes to going through this journey, avoid them like the plague. Because they will dig deep and talk about... Oh, you went through that? Right. So I had a friend who had it bad. Hey, they still haven't recovered still. Yeah. For me, my my biggest uh, trigger was, you know, talk. Like, I had to go out. I had to do things, right? I was looping on things. But I still wanted to, you know, live life, engage in life. And I did. And I got sucked into trigger, triggering situations with conversations. So, you know, you know, my, I was triggered and I was traumatized by my symptoms and there was a lot of them, but one of the big ones, cause you have like the, like five, six, some people have, you know, six, seven of the big ones or maybe three or two. And then the rest are just, uh, whatever the menu's offering that week or day, right? So you got the little alarms that drive you nuts and you got the big ones for me. Uh, it was my heart my gut, um, my brain. So I was worried about a heart attack. I was worried about, uh, that I was going to get a, another, you know, I have to go to surgery for something with my gut. Something was going to explode. You know, my colon was going to rupture or I was going to have a blockage or I'd have to another diverticulitis flare and I'd have a certain need to go through surgery again. My, my biggest flare, the biggest one for me at that time was going through surgery again. Because that was the most traumatic thing I experienced. And I think the reason why it was the most traumatic thing that I experienced because my bucket was full already. My baseline was already at a thousand. My alarms were already ringing. And this was like putting salt on the wound. When if I was regulated and I went to get, you know, um, some sort of surgery, which I probably wouldn't have needed surgery because if you're regulated, you don't really get sick. But let's say, let's say, you know, for, just to make an example let's say you're regulated you gotta go for surgery so you go and it's not a big deal you get it done sure you might get scared because that's a normal reaction but afterwards you heal quickly right everything works out no problem you don't have alarms as many alarms on it you might have a couple alarms but they go back to standby they reset again and it's just a normal procedure but when you're going in there with the alarms already ringing and you pour, put on gas, pour gas all over it, it's going to perceive that there's lions everywhere. And it just skyrockets. So that became a traumatic experience. And with every new symptom that I had, it became another trauma that I was going through. So my symptoms were my post-traumatic stress. Those were my, my OCD looping hell, right? So because of that, with every new symptom or big symptom... I was body checking in relation to it. 
checking uh, in the beginning it was googling just to get the reassurance and you know when you know when you google to get reassurance you always google the wrong thing it pops up out of nowhere you think you're you're doing a safe google like there's no way this should be safe this is holistic page is it a holistic page and then the big c comes in cancer right you figure that oh yeah an itchy finger this should be this should be cancer what the f right you want to google the uh, you know uh drinking uh iced tea you know i love iced tea why do i love iced tea because you have cancer like it doesn't make any sense and that's why i had to stop the googling but aside from that i i was my symptoms gave me lots of trauma all of them individually and you know the main big main ones so i had a lot of body checking so my body checking went like checking my pulse uh, making sure it's a strong pulse if it wasn't a strong pulse then it was going down rabbit holes and then right and then i need to have that reassurance because if i don't have that reassurance i'm just going to loop on this thought forever and it's insanity because you're looping on a thought of an alarm the brain's going alarm alarm you just you just opened up a can buddy you shouldn't have checked your your pulse because if you checked your pulse you barely felt it so an alarm went off now you got to investigate and you better investigate and find the answer or else we're not going to stop bugging you because we're perceiving danger and our job is to keep you alive and this could be a dangerous thing where you might die right and that's how you go down these rabbit holes and then Right, so it was checking my blood pressure, checking my heart rate, probably 50 times a day. Blood pressure, I would usually go to the grocery store. And I stopped, I remember I had a machine that I would check it at home. Uh, and I stopped doing that because people watch you. Like my wife, my kid, my my mom, my mom, right? If you do something, if you check, if you do body checking when your mom's nearby... They're going to make things 10 times worse. And usually with anybody, they're going to be like, oh, so you're you know, you're checking it again. Did, did you check it already? And they, they, after a while, they you know, they can reaffirm what you're fearing. You know that? You know what I heard? That's the sign of blue, blue, blue. No! Ah, so you dig deeper. Or uh, they start getting annoyed with it. They get tired of it. They're like, oh, fuck, here you go again. So what do you do? You still want to body check. So what do you do? You do it in secret. Right, I had uh, a thermometer in my truck at the time, uh, and then when I got a car, I got a, a thermometer in my car, in the washroom, beside my bed, in my pocket. Right, I had a bunch of thermometers, and I had a pendulum because my pendulum would also. I would ask a question: Am I going to die tomorrow? No. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, what else? I was constantly checking my gut, right, because it, it kept mimicking pains that made me think I needed to go to the hospital for diverticulitis because that I just I just went through you know a half a year of diverticulitis bullshit and had surgery and it took forever to heal finally I'm healed but the alarm is still ringing the alarm's still thinking I'm going through this whole process right since I wasn't regulated I went to surgery I was there for a week and a bit it felt like I was there for a month people were dying in my room Right, that was traumatic. All the beeping and sounds and me falling asleep and then they wake me up. Okay, it's time for surgery and I wasn't prepared for that. So it was, okay, blood pressure, checking it, making sure I could feel a pulse because there was a while where I couldn't feel anything. My pulse felt like it was in the next room. What else? Heart rate. Because it was, my resting heart rate was at 109, 110, sometimes 120. And this was me laying in bed right and i couldn't understand like why is it racing and i i was used to having a resting heart rate of 70 right at 75 with smoking i was used to that so i didn't so of course you know you're checking your your pulse your 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 heart rate constantly i was obsessed with it and then it, the fear this is the, the only thing that was good about body checking and fear and having relentless anxiety this is the only way I quit smoking. Because every time I, I had a cigarette, which I'm going to do a video about, please, if you're smoking, quit. Because you'll never recover if you don't. I'm telling you right now. Quit 
smoking. Yeah, I was checking my heart rate uh, constantly. My hand was always dun -dun 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 -dun. and I wouldn't sit there and count to a hundred. I, I would just multiply it by I think it was six, and then I'd get the average, and I'd be like, oh, right. And then what else was there? I was uh, body checking my gut, my gut pains. Right, if I had a stabbing pain that was there, it was so triggering. I got the flash fear. I sometimes wonder, and I know it, it felt like it was forever. That alarm, that body checking with my gut, I had that strong for a year and a half. The first year and a month, a year and a month, I was checking it every day. So what I used to do is I would first check on my side. I'm like, I don't feel anything. I would check it up. Okay, done. I'm like, I think I'm okay. And I would do that again another 10 times that day. Sometimes if I had a, you know, if my brain was sending me symptoms, sensations of stabbing, uh, you name it, so many weird pain, gas, right? Um, it mimicked the whole, my whole shitstorm. So it would, afterwards, after the, the shitstorm or perfect storm was over with and I was finally, you know, healed, it would mimic that and play it over and over again. And my brain would loop on that and play that scenario, everything I went through over and over and over again because it was perceiving that it was still happening even though it wasn't. So, of course I was body checking because I needed reassurance that we're, that my biggest fear was I didn't want to have to go back to the hospital again. But I also didn't want to die. So that forced me to body check just in case I had to go to the hospital again. So, and, you know, in one day, it, if the hard days was me checking that same spot 50 times. And I would do it, in a, like if, if I was near my mom, because sometimes I stayed at my mom's because I was looping on things, uh, I would have to do it in secret because she'd be like, okay, stop checking. Everything is okay. You're nothing's wrong with you. What are you doing again? You just had a surgery. You're okay, Ilmud. And when somebody yells at you, they don't understand why you're checking, which is interesting because my experience and my mom being there to support me ended up putting her, uh, her bucket full, her uh, baseline also went up and then she ended up having anxiety because of my whole experience because it was draining for her to have to explain things to me all the time and and I wasn't listening I kept body checking it must have been frustrating seeing your kid go through that and her, she was worried for me wondering oh no what is going to happen to him is he going to have go speak single and alone and stuck like this not working what is going to, right she was probably thinking all these things as a mom worried about their son is their life are they gonna be stuck are they not gonna listen to me Right? Does he not understand? Is he going to be broken and think he's broken? So then she started having symptoms. And she was doing body checking. After telling me not to body check, she was body checking her head constantly. Like, ugh, ugh. Because she, she felt like there was this band sensation on her head. Right? And she would put the these things on that. What are these things that, that part your hair? Just to cover it so she wouldn't feel the sensation. So... You know, I was body checking, she was body checking, and then I would sabotage her body checking by hiding her things so she would be like, I'm at, what am I going to do, right? Because eventually I got over it, but she was still going through it, so then I would sabotage her, and it, it would fuck with her day. So as you can kind of tell, me and my mom were a lot of, well, I'm like my mom, right? She's been through shit in her life. She had anxiety a couple times in her life. Same thing happened to me. I had my perfect storms, Right? nervous breakdowns so did she so we're a lot alike from our parent my dad cool as a cucumber and the thing is when I checked my gut the side of my this is just one of the gut checkings that I did I had many I checked here for a totally different can of worms I checked here I used to do these I check up to check my gallbladder like I used to watch all these medical fucking videos about how to check your gallbladder and then your fucking all the organs and then back to my gut so anyway, I'm checking my my gut for diverticulitis again, just because I was re needing reassurance. And then, you know, the signs said, no, we're good. Everything's fine. 
But that wasn't enough. I would still second guess and think, well, what if, I don't know, when I went through this the last time, I, I didn't detect it. Maybe it's the same thing. Maybe the what if toss, catastrophizing, right? And then my body would mimic right down to the T exactly what happened before I had to go to surgery. Stabbing pains, all kinds of weird sensations, right? Weird, very weird sensations. The, the normal, uh, you know, sensations of what you think would be diverticulitis or a UC flare or IBS. Or so I had all these different bowel issues, bloating, like not just one thing, not just a diverticulitis uh, fear. I had a bunch of fears, of, a bunch of different gut issues that people can go through. I had them all, right? So imagine I'm, I'm checking my gut for all these different gut issues that I felt like I was having. And then what else? I had to stop looking in the toilet. Because that's body checking. You're, reassur you're looking for reassurance by looking in the toilet. I was always looking for discolorment if I formed a stool or if there was blood. Ah, man. I wish I would have stopped looking in the toilet earlier. Because there were so many times, of course, you're going to find shit. And it was, and that just kept me looping longer. But I didn't know this at the time. I had to experience it. I had to make the mistakes of looking into the toilet and looping on what I saw. And then there was times where I was looping on what I thought I saw. And there was nothing there. But I still convinced myself I saw something. That's how your brain can, it can literally make you see shit that is not there. Right? It can create hallucinations smokes and mirrors fucked up shit like there was this one time my mom she was uh talking to me and all i i was going through a, a crazy anxiety attack for three days it didn't stop and all i heard was her going hing, 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 hing. and her face started melting and i started freaking i knew what was going on I, I started freaking out only because i was like fed up with not getting out of this anxiety loop that i was going through and i'm like oh my goodness now your face is melting right so anyway Back to the toilet story. So I'm looking down and I clearly saw nothing in there. I didn't see any blood. And what I would do is I would look and I quickly flush. Like there was like two sides of me that would go, oh, what are you doing? Stop. Go. So, so I would like sabotage. Like I couldn't help myself. I need to investigate. No. Flush it. What are you doing? What are you fucking? Right. It's like I had two personalities. One that was going down rabbit holes and the other one going, what are you fucking doing, man? Stop. Right. And then quickly I would flush. I'm like, no, I got to check because I swear I thought I just saw blood. Even though I didn't. It was an all clear. My hand went down to flush the toilet. And then I'm like, I swear there was in my periphery a speckle of blood. And then for the whole day, it would set my the course from the rest of my day. I was looping on. Fuck, there was blood. I think there was blood. Oh, fuck, here we go again. So I had to stop looking in the toilet. And what I did, this is when I started doing the methods. Right Before that, it was looping on what I saw in the toilet and, and looping on what I didn't see in the toilet. And blood pressure, heart rate, uh, a bunch of other things. And then eventually, I just had to stop. Stop the body checking. If you're doing that, stop it now. Trust me, because you, if you do that, you're... And with me, I was doing this with probably 10 different things. Gallbladder, heart rate, blood pressure, stools, gut pains, checking on them, making sure, right, reassurance. Checking my temperature, probably 20 times a day. Oh, it's a little low. Oh, let's take that again. Okay. Oh, it's a little high. Let's keep that one. That one's, oh, that one's too high. That was, oh, that's way too high. Shit, I got a fever. Maybe I have an infection. Maybe I'm going to go to sepsis, right? Catastrophizing up to the next level. And I was constantly, dee -dee -dee. oh, that wasn't a good reading. Oh, hold it underneath. Oh, I just had some food. So maybe the, my tongue's too hot. Maybe that's why. Oh, Google, does your temperature increase when you digest? Oh, that's why it's too high. Oh, does your blah, 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 because you did this? Oh, that's why it's, Right? You're in this loophole of reassurance, Googling and body checking. And what do you think all this body checking? Like that's like probably 15 different things of body checking that one thing complicates another thing that leads to another thing that body checks. Because if you're checking this thing, 
there's you know a list of symptoms that support or rules something out. So I'm here fucking ruling things out all fucking day. And what do you think that does to your baseline? What do you think that does to your bucket? What do you think it does to the alarms that are ringing like crazy? It's pouring gas on the fire. Your alarms, there's more alarms being turned on. Your bucket's fucking... It's overflowing times a thousand, right? It's overflowing so much that it's filling up another bucket. Your baseline's at, no, a million, not a thousand. No, a thousand, you can't get past a thousand. You cannot. I was going at a million. <laughs> alarms were being turned on. You know what was happening? They were making alarms, shipping alarms in the factory, making alarms just so they could put them in, put the wiring in to turn them on. That's how, how much you make yourself, that's how much you're feeding the alarm system with all the body chicken. So you have to, pendulums. I had to stop using my pendulum. Everything. And there's ways that you might not notice that you're, body checking or looking for reassurance and you know when you stop doing it and you give yourself a month you start to realize man you know it's hard to stop because the brain is needing an answer right now it needs to know are we fighting or fleeing this is a danger alarm give me the answer we need it now instantly instantly it's like there's a bomb that's going to go off in five, four, instantly. What's it going to be, helmet? What's it going to be? Whoa, 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 whoa. Right? And you're like, oh, I don't know. I got to, I better, you're like, deet, 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 deet. right? You only have three seconds every time to get that answer or, or your worst fear is going to blow up in your face. So realize that when you, you, you first be aware of all the things that you do to check. Okay. Stop checking your temperature. Stop going on the Facebook groups, number one. That's, that's This is just a given. I just assume that you guys are already doing that. So I'm going to say it again just in case there's somebody in the back that's going, Oh, I should. Okay, stop Googling. Get off all Facebook groups. You should probably just get off Facebook in, in general. If you have any tools or devices that check temperatures, heart rates, blood pressure, uh, stop looking in the toilet. Um, anything like that. Be aware of it first and just fucking stop it. When you, what you're going to notice is notice is hey, it's a notice. What you're going to notice is that this allows the baseline to come down and when it comes down because you're not refiring it, you're not refiring that, that trauma loop right? And the trauma loop is just there to keep you alive. It's That's all it's there for. When you allow it to finally calm down by not throwing gas on it, it's going to send you less alarms and they're going to be less intense, right? Which turns off alarms finally and empties your bucket. And it takes time, right? Uh, there are alarms that come and go, come and go, come and go, quick, 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 quick. And they're the ones that take a long time for them to turn off. So my gut alarm, this was one of the big ones. It took me a year and a half for that thing to get to the point where I wasn't checking anymore. I was like, because I, I allowed it to be there. I let it do its thing. I leaned into it. I went towards it. I opened that door eventually. Not right away, because if I would have opened that door and hunted my, my uh, fears about my gut... I would have just re-traumatized myself. It would just reset it to fucking back to a thousand, right? I would have been pouring uh, gasoline all over it. So it, it was something I had to go slowly through. And the exposures about is what made it happen. Exposing myself to all the fears that I had when I was ready. And when I exposed myself to these things, of course I, I, I had a setback. Of course I went 10 steps back. Of course it made me loop for a week. But I needed to do that to turn the alarm from a 5 to a 10 first, then to a 5, 3, 2, 1, then it was 0. And of course, you have setbacks where it goes back to a 10, 5, 3, 2, 2 1, 0. 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 5, 4, 3, 2, then 2, then, then 1, then 0, and then 5, and then 0, and then eventually it's done. You recalibrated it. 
you turn that alarm off. And it was one of the big ones. We have big alarms and we got the everyday small ones that are there to get your attention. And the big ones just know they take time and they might feel like they're not budging. And why am I fucking body checking again with this fucking shit? And you'll give in, right? You're gonna, there's gonna be times you're gonna give in. You can, I, if I could just check my body quick, I'll be good. And you say, I promise, I promise, I'm not. And, and then you feel guilty for body checking because you're doing so good. And what does this mean that I, that I body check three times and does this mean I'm going back to my old self? Does this mean I'm the neural pathways I created are just being reversed? It's just, I have to start all over again? No. Just be aware of it. You fucked up. You slipped. You body checked three times when you were doing so well. Right? And you told yourself, okay, just one more time. Okay, fine. Check it. Okay, I think that's good. Ah, uh, you know what? I don't think I did it right. I should really... Oh, no. It's, okay, check it again. Fuck. Okay, I think we're good. It doesn't matter, man. It's, you're still going to have that alarm ringing. And you can check it a million times. You're not going to be able to check it enough for the brain to trust you. That's why you have to stop. Because when you stop, then you're just sending the message to the brain that well, there's nothing to check. There's no danger there. You got to let that stabbing pain go. Let it be. Let it be there. You've been through this over and over again. You've been checked. You've been The doctors checked you out. You had the surgery or you had the whatever, X, Y, Z. You've been checked. Doctor says you're fine. But it's been a fucking year. Okay. Allow everything to be there. Let it do its thing. Do turbo exposures in your mind. You don't have to do it physically. You can do it in your mind. Bring the scary thought up in your mind. Get your phone. Press record. Record it. and Do an audio file. Talk in detail about what is so scary talk about what is exactly scaring you talk uh, say a paragraph in full detail get really detailed with it really trigger yourself when you say this shit press stop and right then you would have triggered yourself okay sit in it sit in the fear allow it to be then engage okay we're doing something totally different a quality engagement not back to health quality engagement that has nothing to do with health playing soccer you're you know taking your dog for a walk you're dancing right you're getting into it you're, sh you're shaking your booty and then come back later and listen to that recording again repeat do that five times in a day or do it if it's too much do it once a day come back to it tomorrow listen to it again trigger yourself make that alarm go to a 10 expose yourself sit in the fear right lean into it don't white knuckle through it don't go Aah! instead Look at your knuckle and go, ah, yeah, give me more. I love this. And that's how you turn it back to a zero, right? The turbo exposures work great. And three time, even while you're doing the work, just because you feel the, the fear does not mean you're not, you're not doing the work. It does not mean something isn't happening behind the scenes. The work we do now creates the finish line down the road, right? What we do now is what creates the pavement in the future of recovery, right? So we're here, ah, the work, fuck, this sucks. I hate this shit, but we're doing the right methods. All of a sudden, right here, the pavement's being made, right? And they're making the, the, the wreath that you have to cut with the scissors or the finish line that you gotta cross, right? The more you do it here, the harder it is, the more this is created, right? When you just avoid things here, this, this disappears, gone, right? So don't measure your success on the amount of symptoms that you have in recovery, right? I'll try to say that better. Don't measure your success in recovery by the symptoms that are present. And this is right to the end, right? So for a year and a half, the beginning is usually more. The middle and the end are, for me, they were pretty equal. That's why it's really easy to get discouraged in the middle part because nothing's really changing. It's just holding on, right? But you need to be persistent. It's that persistence that will get it to lift at the end when you're indifferent to it because you need to train on the alarms. You need to train on the fear. Expose yourself to it so the brain goes, meh, I don't care if you have to go, if you have to, go to the hospital or if this if you have a diverticulitis flare again or if 
you have blood in your stool again. Like the fears that you have, you know you're doing the work if you get to the point where you're indifferent, honestly indifferent to these things popping up. When you get to a point of indifference, that's when they lift. So give yourself a, a chance at least by being aware of your body checking and things that you use to re reassure yourself constantly. Stop doing them because and when you stop doing them, there's going to be a transitional period where you're going to be counting on them. Where you be, oh man, what do I, what do I? And it's going to bring you into a setback because you're, it's like an addiction. You need that reassurance. The brain's like, whoa, we need answers here. What's going on? We used to be able to check, but you know, when you check, sometimes it, it slaps you in the face and you go down even deeper rabbit holes. So do the hard work, cut yourself off, stop body checking. It takes some time and eventually you won't need to check anymore. So you don't want to be like me where you're secretly doing body checking by going, oh, I just got to take another shit. Didn't you already take one? Wow, what did you eat? <laughs> right? So I could just go to the washroom and body check because I didn't want to trigger a conversation about it or get people annoyed with me or have them say something to me that would make me trigger. I've had it so many times where, you know, somebody would say something I would do a body check and they'd notice it and they go, oh, what was that? Oh, yeah. Blah, blah. I had diverticulitis. Yeah. And then, you know, it's just, oh, right. So you're opening up a can of worms right there for them to go, oh, man, my friend had that. She's never been over it. She Did she have surgery? Yeah, it's still bad, man. It's horrible. Yeah, man, that's tough. It's like, fuck, that's the last thing I wanted to fucking hear. Let's get ready to loop on this for another two weeks and bring my baseline up to 1,000 and be exhausted in a safe room and be flexing my muscles out the ass, literally out the ass. One thing leads to another, it gets complicated because, and that's what usually happens. When you have 70 symptoms, there's there's a handful of them that are creating new symptoms because of the symptom. It gets complicated. So if you really wanna start off taking a lot of loads out, just stop body checking and take away your reassurance behaviors. You got to stay on the path and keep going. Trust me. I know right now it seems overwhelming and all, you, all you're seeing right now is that alarm in your fucking face going, murder, murder. And how are you going to have any clarity? Your beliefs are attached to that alarm. And that's normal. It's supposed to be. Right? Your beliefs can't see anything else except for what it sees, that magnified alarm. But eventually when we turn these alarms off and they shrink, your beliefs are going to change. You're going to have clarity. And you're going to have confidence that, man, I'm going to get out of this. Oh, wow, I'm out of this. I, How did I ever get sucked into that brainwashing of my alarms? That reality that I'll never get out of this. And then you think, man, I, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm free. I'm free from this. I'm recovered. All the symptoms are gone. Right? You're going to get there. Don't worry. You'll be fine. Trust me, I guarantee it. It's just the in-between, the whole journey, it's hard.